We give him all the glory. We give him honor. We give him all the glory. We give him honor. I'm singing that song to the Lord because I value every day he gives. Every day he brings across a way to do this nourishment for you. So that you too can nourish others. He is the one who gives us today. So give all glory, all honor, all adoration to the name of the Lord God. And may he bless you wherever you are watching and you are getting nourished through this daily nourishment for leaders in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Today our value is planning. We must value planning. Remember, values are the principles that guide your life. As a leader, as a minister, as a church worker, as a church leader. Values guide our life. Values are the way you can be described. And one of the values which you see in your life is planning. That you are a, you are a leader that loves to plan things and very meticulous. That you don't do things in a ramshackle way. You plan your work and you work your plan. You plan smartly. You plan with the Lord. So, and if you need to change your plan, there's no qualm about that. You are willing to change it in a very good way. And so that you can adjust your plan to God's will and purpose for your life. Don't be known as a leader that has no plan. Or a ramshackle, uh, everything goes leader. This is one of the things you must place value on. They are intangibles, but they are very, very important if you want to make impact with your life, with your ministry, and with your ministrations. And the Lord will help you along that line in Jesus' name. Our scripture today is uh, Luke Gospel, chapter 14, verse number 28 and 29. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. In other words, plan your work. You want to build a tower? You want to build a house? How many stories do you want to build? You plan it. Because how high you want to go, that's how you must plan to go deep first. You have to, because the foundation for two story, for ten story, or for ten, uh, ten, ten, ten floor, ten floor building are quite different from each other. The materials you use, the pillars you make, is going to be very different. So everything is subject to planning. You must plan your life, you must plan your work, you must plan your ministry, you must plan your outreach, you must plan every detail to the glory of God the Father if you really want to make impact. Planning is a deliberate act of making detailed arrangements for something you want to do in the nearest future. Planning and preparation, they are synonymous. You plan and you prepare a detailed, deliberate act, a deliberate arrangement for something you want to do in the nearest future. To pray is good, but to back up your prayer with planning is far, far better. To pray is good. Many of us ministers and leaders, we believe in praying. I too believe in praying. I've talked about prayers and I'm still going to talk so much about prayers because we are not praying enough. But we cannot substitute prayer for planning or planning for prayer. In fact, we must plan to pray and pray to plan. That's the balance of it. We must not only depend on prayer. God will do it. God will do it. We also, he has given us the brain to think and to ruminate and to plan. That is, if you want to, if you want to build a tower, you must plan first. Sit down, count the cost. That's what our Lord Jesus says. And as an army, in further in the uh, furtherance of that passage, also in the next verse, say, if you want to go and fight a war, and you have ten thousand soldiers, and you are going to be meeting about twenty, thirty, four hundred thousand soldiers, you sit down, and plan, plan your maneuvers, plan your strategies, plan how you come in, what you do to outwit your enemy. It requires planning. Yes, we will pray for God to give us victory. We will also plan. Planning. You must know that, number one, planning is a process of turning dreams into reality. Whatever dream you have, plan to make it a reality. And think and plan in a very godly way. 
Then two, planning is a process of determining a course of action. What are the actions, what are the uh, systematic actions that you need to take to bring your vision, your dream into reality, either in that church, in that ministry, in that community, in that family, in that nation. Plan it. Planning has capacity to produce the realization of group or personal goals. When we have goals as a group or as a team or as an individual, you plan. How do we accomplish it? How do we go about it? What are the steps I need to take? What are the, uh, the, uh, the pillars I need to build? What are the measurements that I need to put in place so that we know that we are going towards that goal or not? Planning helps you to remain focused. Yes, yeah, very important. You can follow that plan. You don't deviate out of that plan. You follow that plan, either for your life or for your work. Planning controls your spending only for what is essential, what is important to the achieving of that goal and objective. You see, if without planning, you can spend anyhow. And if they say some people are spendthrift. They just buy whatever they, they don't need. But when you plan, when you have a plan in place and you know your plan very well and you follow that plan, you can control your life, control your spending, control what you do and what you don't do. Planning ensures direction for the church, for the church. We should plan our services, plan our meetings, plan our programs, plan what we are going to do. Next step of action, plan the vision. How do we accomplish it? The goal we set for ourselves, the membership we want to realize this year. Plan it prayerfully, prayerfully plan. Plan, plan where? Let your plan be flexible so that you can make mid course adjustments if need be. Plan. Your plan should not be cast on granite. No, you, you can make mid-course uh, mid adjustment. As God, like for example, this year that we are doing this recording now, there is a virus pandemic outside uh, from middle March, and uh, we are still in April now. And, and uh, uh, we, we don't know when we are going to be free from it. Of course, it has disrupted our plans for this year. We have to cancel a lot of programs. But as the corona is coming to an end and God is giving us victory, answering our prayers and reducing the pandemic, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll readjust the plan. We'll readjust the plan. We can still achieve what God says we should achieve this year. It's a possibility. We go replanning. mid cost adjustment. That's because nobody expected it. And it has come, and we have to adjust our plans, adjust our plans. Yeah, that's the way it should be in life. But the evil thing is not to plan at all. We must plan. Work your plan and plan your work. Pray your plan and plan your prayers. Very, very crucial. If you really want to make impact with your life and you want to accomplish all the objectives that God has said you should accomplish. And the Lord will help you as you plan. Plan where? Plan big and pray over your plans. Bring the power and the presence of God to your plan. Get His approval over that plan. Let His power back up your plan. Are you building a small building? Are you building a church? Are you building a ministry? Are you building a family? Are you building a great future? Plan and work your plan. Don't let it just be plan on paper. Uh -huh. It must be in your heart. And every day when you wake up, you know what to pray. You know what to fast for. You know what to go out for. You know what to do. Steps to take. Plan your work and work your plan. Pray your plan and plan your prayers. And the Lord will bless you and help you to accomplish that which has proposed for your life by good planning. That's why we should place value on. Value your plan and plan your value. It's better to work according to plan than to work aimlessly in a ramshackle, shambolic way that there's no, no visible plan in place. Whatever just come, just, just a spur of the moment ministry. Please don't do spur of the moment ministry. It doesn't last. Plan it out. Even if you are going to preach, plan your outline, plan your preaching, plan what you want to say. Plan what you want to focus on, what you want to emphasize. I think you can see what we are doing. We plan it every day. I know already what we are going to be sharing. Of course, the Holy Spirit is bringing more, but this is what we are what to our plan. We plan it out in a book and we work at that plan. And that's why God is bringing it systematically to you and is blessing your life. Plan your work and work your plan. And let your plan receive divine approval. And if the Lord cancels some of your plan, well and good. Make me time adjustment. But it's better to walk by plan. It is there you can really achieve much in life. The Lord bless you and help you as you plan well and plan big. And plan what you cannot achieve. That only God's power can help you to achieve it. And you will achieve it to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name. Amen.